Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? My name is Ray Nail Boy. Welcome back to the channel, Fishing Trips. And we back for another vlog, y'all. All right, check it, man. Check it out, man. I got a special vlog for you. Guess where I'm at? Guess where I'm at? I'm at a secret spot. Nobody knows where this spot is at. So I'm not telling you. Don't ask me, okay? Don't ask me where I'm fishing at, okay? If you want to try to figure out, if you get lucky enough to see some kind of landmark, then you can come check it out yourself. Don't ask me where this spot at. But yeah, I got one goal. Nike skunk. I don't care what happens, I just don't want to get skunked. So that's the goal today. So yeah, um, been here once before. I'm gonna try it again and see what we can do. I think I can do it. Oh. We got it. Whoa. Whoa. We got home, baby. Enjoy the vlog. Let's go! The walls were white The flame was red But her eyes were blue So instead I was thinking of you I was thinking of you Her skin was soft Her laugh was light But my heart was heavy So it was a fight Not thinking of you But I was thinking of you I push it down, I bury it deep, and I flirt with sorrow, and the company I keep, to stop thinking of you, to stop thinking of you, to stop thinking of you, to stop thinking of you. Did y'all just see that? Y'all just see me go down that half mile hill. What about 100 pounds of equipment? I don't even feel like fishing no more, man. I'm just about to take a nap. Oh, damn. All right, let me show y'all the spot. Um, the other side is kind of rough. It's about a 10 mile north wind. Um, so far, so good, man. I'm the only person here. So hopefully it stays like that. I learned my lesson from my last vlog about going fishing on a weekend. Never again, only on weekdays for me. So hopefully I have this spot to myself. I came here once before, got skunk. <laughs> Saw a guy cross on a kayak on the other side, killing it with a damn, you know, bobber. So I'm gonna try my bobber and see if it works. But first, let me dry up, cause I'm looking like a Krispy Kreme donut right now. Get started, and let's fish. All right, y'all, so I'm using my jetty rig setup. Got my bobber stopper bead bobber. Got about a three, four foot liter, 20 pound fluoro, number size one hook. Let's cut that tag in, baby, what you doing? See what we can do, we can adjust the feet. I'm not sure how deep this water is over here. So I'm gonna probably do, start with about five, five to six feet in this kind of Work away from there. Let's see what we can do. There you go. Let's see. God damn, they got me again. All right, we about to move over here. It's time to relocate, y'all. I'm convinced. I'm seeing some good action, so. All right, finally getting some bites. I'm seeing some tailing over there, so let's head towards the cove. There you go. All right, so the cove. Producing bites, but I think they're crabs. Because it's taking it under. I set the hook, nothing happens. They're just literally grabbing it, eating my bait. Okay, so the crab has it. Oh, wait, we got it. Oh, we got it, y'all. We on, baby. Oh, we on, what is that? We got you that time. Oh, we got you that time, baby. 
We got you that time, baby. Oh my God, what's that, baby? We got something nice, y'all. Oh my God. Holy crap. That is something huge. That's, oh, that's something huge. Oh, this man. That's a big red. No, we lost it. Oh, we lost it. Oh, we lost it. We lost it. Oh my God, I missed my red. I missed my red. Did I pull, pull the hook? the hook So yeah, let's find out the spot and um, see what we can do. Looks promising. We made it all the way in here. First observation. It's currently 10 o'clock, 11.20, I'm sorry. And it's about 100 degrees out here, man. We made it down. There's a ton of mosquitoes. So I'd have to spray DEET on everything. Um, so I'm good now. You kind of avoid me. There's a ton of mullet just jumping around. I don't know if there's any kind of predator fish in here, but let's find out real quick. I only got like an hour before I die. Come on, let's go. That's crab. Definitely. Definitely crab. Wait, we got it. We got it. Oh, here we go. Better fish. Better fish. That's another drum. That's another drum. Look at that, y'all. What? All right, y'all. So, what I'm seeing over there is a huge school of puppy drum. We got to get it back in, but like 13 inches. So, yeah. It's a school of drum. Um, when I was letting my barber just sit there, they won't do nothing. I'm just twerking it, twerking it. Well, you know, not like twerk team twerking it, but twerking it. And they're biting, so beautiful animal. Let's get her back in, see if we can get a good keeper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm okay. All right, y'all, so that school of drum is still there. Um, I'm locked in on how to get them to strike. So when I just sit it there, they don't touch it, right? Okay. Watch. Just twitch, twitch. They bite it. It's not a popping cork, but it's working. And it seems like they wait just as they get closer to shore. They strike it. There we go. There we go. There we go. Got it again. There we go. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Where you going, baby? No, nah, no, nah, you ain't going nowhere, son. Oh, this is a nice one. Oh, wait a minute. That's a red, baby. Oh, that's a red, y'all. Get on the boat. Get on the boat. Let's go. Let's go, baby. That's a red. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Are you serious right now, y'all? Oh, please be a keeper. Please be a keeper, Red. 18, 18, get her back in, man. I can't believe a Red's in there. What are you doing in there, baby? What are you doing in there? Red, get you back in. Get you back in.
that a trout? Trout. Trout. Y'all, got a trout. Let's go, baby. Got a trout. Hurry, put him back though. She's bleeding. Wow, wow. Huge bait ball. Oh my God, there's something that they're in the middle of it eating it. Look at that. That is crazy. Oh, there we go. There we go. We got it. We got it. Oh my God. Keep, oh, that's good, Red. No, no, no. Come on. Get on the boat. Get on the boat. Let's go, baby. Oh, yes. Yes. It was chasing that bait ball, bro. There she got it. It's about 17 inches. It's a beautiful specimen, man. It was chasing all that fish and that bait ball, so, you know. Gotta get it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, all right. So beautiful fish. Oh, man. So healthy. Three inches short. <laughs> so you get a pass, homie. You get a pass. Can't eat you, but I will in a few months. Whoa, there you go. Oh, she goes. Yes, let's go. Let's go, baby. We got it. Whoa. Whoa. We got it, baby. Keep your ride up, baby. That is. Oh my God. Look at this lady fish, y'all. Look at this lady fish. Oh my God. Are you serious? Look how big that lady fish is. That is insane. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right in the middle of the bait ball. Let's go. Oh, there you go, there you go. There you go. Oh, we got it, we got it. Oh, we got it. Oh, what is that? Oh, keep it. That's another red, that's another red. Get on the boat, get on the boat. Let's go, another red boy, what? Another beautiful specimen. 17 inches, not a keeper. Needs to be 20, right? 20, All right, calm down, calm down. So yeah, I'm trying to get a keeper. I'm trying to get a keeper. I don't know what number red this is for me, but having too much fun. Come on, let's go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get it back in. All right, tell your homies, I'm looking for them. Hasta la vista. All right, y'all, so this is a new PB for the smallest red I've ever caught. <laughs> Look at that pretty fish, man. <laughs> Look at the spots, it's amazing. All right, let's get it back in, beautiful. Um, they're kind of like circling right here. Yeah, right here. There you go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This might be a keeper. This might be a keeper. That is a big fish. This might be a keeper. Where's my net? I can't flip this. It's a keeper, I can't flip it. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Oh my God. This might be my keeper. This might be my keeper. Oh my God. Not my camera, big boy. Relax. Look, man, if you're not big enough, I'm taking you back, okay? Mm. If you're not big. All right, this is my keeper. Y'all, I got my cooler. Hold on. Okay, baby. Just relax. I only want to see if you're big enough to see if I'm gonna eat you, okay? That's it. Nothing to be scared of. Be a keeper, be a keeper. 20 and a half. 20 and a half. Oh my god, we got a keeper. Whoa, no, 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 20 and a half, gotta keep it, finally, finally, no, 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 y'all, what time is it, man, it's two o'clock, I got here at Moses Lake, like six, seven, eight, nine, nine, twelve, one, two, seven hours, Seven hours. 
but we got her done. Slot red. Whoa, whoa. Slot red. Oh my God. 20 and a half inches. Keeper. Almost had a heat stroke for you, buddy. She was totally worth it. He was worth it. Oh my God. So yeah, I gotta take her back to the truck, put her in the cooler, come back. Yes, indeed. Such a beautiful fish. Y'all, they're out here chasing this huge bait, bait ball, man. I don't know how I got lucky enough that this bait ball is literally just going back and forth, standing in front of me. I don't know if it's a shadow that I'm casting or whatnot, but they're standing right in front of me and these reds are just going back and forth getting them. So let's put her in the cooler. Keeper, yeah, let's go. All right, y'all, so I'm back in the kitchen, back in Houston and ready to do some cooking. All right, check this out, man. I hope you enjoyed the catch segment of the episode. Such a roller coaster of emotions. Y'all, when I first lost that fish in the morning, I was done. I was ready to go home. I was ready to go home. I wanted to quit. I, just, I was ready to go, I was ready to go. So, perseverance is uh, me just really wanting to complete this vlog. I decided to stop at the second spot and killed it. Killed it, y'all saw it, y'all saw it. You, you, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. All right, so what do I plan on doing with that keeper red? Fish nachos, I've never made fish nachos before. I'm gonna try to keep it quick and simple. You know, all my meals are gonna be quick and simple. I ain't no chef, I ain't trying to make it all professional and all kind of stuff you can't really do. You know, if you watch my actual, you know, cat clean the cooks, this is something you actually cook yourself. First thing first, let's cook the red. Okay, before we cook it, we have to clean it. I'm not redoing this again. Come on, y'all know what I mean, come on. All right, y'all, so here is the star of our show, our slot red, and she's a beauty. And she's a beauty. Perfect slot red. So yeah, um, I'm gonna do something a little different with this as well. Like I said, I haven't filleted a lot of redfish. I think today was actually the most redfish I've ever caught in one, one day. So first for me as well, you know, you know, we're doing it, we're doing it big. Um, let's see here. All right, so something else I wanna try as well. Um, one of my subscribers kind of mentioned that, you know, they use an like, electric fillet knife to do the reds, which made me remember, I actually bought this years ago, the Electric Fisherman fillet knife. I have not used this in years. And I just remembered, like I saw another YouTuber kind of use this to help kind of break through the rib bones. Then from there, just use the fillet knife to complete it. So I want to attempt that, attempt it, okay? So give me one second, we'll get set up. All right, so first things first, how the hell do you use this? There we go, all right. Now I know um, Bubba Blade actually has a electric fillet knife. Y'all let me know, cause I saw it. It's hella expensive. If I ask my wife to get it for, you know, my birthday or Christmas, let me know if it's worth it. So what I'm gonna do is, let me see here. We'll start this way at the head. Once again, I have not used this in years, maybe once before. Let us probably have on my fingers by the end of this um, segment. Okay. That's a lot of black. So yeah, went through like a champ. Way easier than trying to use my fillet knife. All right, now instead of using my fillet knife, cause I wanna have this really serrated blade, I don't have like a small one, I'm gonna use our bubba knife to complete it. So next I'm gonna go along the top of the spine. I'm just trying to perfect my filleting skills. The more fish I catch, the better I'm gonna get at this, y'all. So we're just gonna head along the top of that spine. Shout out to um, Travis from Spartan Tackle Fishing. He has a YouTube channel, Spartan Tackle Fishing. He just did a catch camp and cook. And y'all, they filleted a redfish with like a pocket knife. It's crazy, y'all gotta watch it. All right, let's go down that way. Should I only, I always kind of decide like, should I stop at the tail to flip it or should I just take it off? 
I'm gonna take it off. I don't know if it really helps me any better. All right, so next, it's just gonna pick up our specimen here. We work our way along the pin bones. Now, the last time um, I attempted to do some fish nachos for the first time, I caught a 16 inch drum and it had worms in it, y'all. Was it a drum? So I couldn't finish the, the catch clean to cook. I was so disappointed. Hold on, I think we got another bone. There we go. I'm just trying to stay above that rib cage. Oh, look at all that meat I'm losing. Hold on. We're going to salvage this. There we go. First side. I want to do um, shells up. Hard shell. Red on a hard shell. Half shell. Half shell. There you go. Not today, though. We'll say that for another day. See if we can get... Now, I heard another trick where you put like a, a hole in it so you can grip it with your finger. Let me try that. I never did it before. Oh, ho, ho. okay, okay. I think um, I saw, what's the name of that YouTube couple? One fish, two fish. But yeah, oh man, that's a game changer, y'all. Put it in a hole, a little slot, and lets you grip it. Makes it so much easier. Oh yeah, and by the way, FYI, this meat looks perfect. No worms, turn up. Okay. Go about the rib cage, and there we go. Oh man. Let me ask that something else. Um, do y'all bleach your redfish? I'm just curious. And if you bleed it, how do you bleed redfish? I mean, do you just cut the gills with like a knife? Just kind of like come in here and just snap it? Or do I get like some sears, come in there and cut the gills? Got them pin bones right there. Let's get rid of that. Can't have bones in my nachos. Perfect. All right. All right, y'all, so let me fillet the other side of my fish. Um, slight bloodline. So if I bleed my fish, would that bloodline come out? Go ahead and take out the bloodline. One second, y'all. I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't know nothing about bloodline until I started watching YouTube. Other than that, I think growing up in our house, we just used to eat the whole thing. Bloodline, fish line, date line. We eat everything on the fish. All right, so we've got some scales, but I can work with this. I can work with this. We're gonna blacken this a little bit, chop it up, and um, yeah, we're gonna sprinkle it on our nachos. So let me go ahead and finish the rest of this filet, and I'll show you how I'm gonna do my condiments and cheese and queso and all other fun stuff. All right, so next up, we're gonna make a very simple queso. It, I'm pretty sure most people know about this combination, but rotel, okay, rotel, and then Vanvita cheese. These two, when they come together, it's like Kobe and Shaq, Jordan and Pippen, all right? One can to a 16 ounce block of Velveeta cheese. Just open that up. What you wanna do is cut your cheese in about one inch blocks. One inch blocks so it can kinda properly melt. So messy, there you go. All right, and next also on your can of Rotel, you don't wanna drain the juice, put all the juice in there. That's gonna help your cheese melt as well, okay? Just like that. From there, just take your block of cheese, and it's not rocket science. We do one inch cubes, like that. And this is, Pretty bomb by itself as well. This has a regular queso dip. Something else I like to do with this is the same combination of rotel and cheese. Mix it all together. Get about one pound of ground beef. Mix it. Nachos. Bomb. B12. 
beef nachos. Just take that. So we're just doing one inch little squares. I'm gotta be perfect. You know, it's cooking, man. Cooking is subject to opinion. All right, there we go. From there, we're just gonna put our cheese to the pot. And we're gonna put our stove. So on just a little bit of a like low. The same thing as it's like medium low. <laughs> no, no, not medium low. Just low, okay? All right, and just make sure you keep an eye on it. Get it for the stir so the cheese will melt down. Um, I have a gas stove, so you can put it on two. You have an electric stove, you know, whatever low is, okay? So let's put that on the stove and we'll check back on this later. All right, y'all, so first things first, we gotta season our fillets here. Once again, I like to keep it simple. I'm trying to taste my fish. So I'm gonna be using the pink salt there. Brown and pink salt from HEB. And also some fresh brown and pepper, my favorite. And to spice it up a little bit. Once again, this is the Chuparaga rub. Chuparaga, you know, once again, I always describe it as the, you know, the Mexican dog that be still in babies. That's what this is. So let me, you know, season up my stuff and be good to go. Now also while we seasoning, I have my stove, um, I'm going to set it to about medium, it's medium, do a smidgen of butter, all right, I'm going to do some olive oil to prevent my butter from burning, like that, get that combination going. Ah, oh, yeah. Smidgen of butter. You don't need a lot of butter. You don't need a lot of butter. All right, here's my seasoned fish. We'll put it seasoned side down. On medium. We're only going to cook this about hmm, three to four minutes. Put my seasoned side down so I can season the back side of it. All right, so it's now eight o'clock on my timer. Get a little spice, make it nice. Slight ground pepper, ground salt, some ground pepper. The Mexican dog. There we go. All right, next up over here, Checking on my queso mix, looking good. Put my heat up a little bit to number four setting. All right. Next up as well, I got this at HEB, focus. This is Texas blend. You know, it has all the bell peppers and onions already cut for you. Why try to do all this stuff yourself when it's already done for you? You know what I'm saying? I'm from team. Ain't nobody got time for that. We got to save time, so let's do so. We'll put a little olive oil in here. Turn our stove up to medium. Check on our fish. Perfect. There we go. Come on, little fish. There you go. Mm. All right, so then about two minutes on the fish. Probably cook it for another couple of minutes. Get our olive oil nice and hot. All right, and of course with nachos, whatever toppings you like, you can actually just put on. If you don't like onions, don't put onions. If you don't like bell peppers, don't put bell peppers. Put whatever you actually like. There you go. Little salt. And a little pepper. Okay. 
right, let me give y'all, let me give y'all a close up of everything that's going on. There's my fish, done. Here are my saute peppers. Okay, I can't flip it. And here's my queso, almost done as well. Yeah, everything's looking good, it's looking good. So let's go ahead and finish everything and we'll get our money shot and head to the table. Alright y'all, so it definitely looks delicious, doesn't it? So yeah, let me tell y'all something, man. This plate of food right here represents 16 hours of work. I woke up at four o'clock in the morning to get ready to go from Houston to Texas City to spend about seven to eight hours of fishing before I finally caught that keeper red to come back to Houston, cook all in the same day and etc. So 16 hours. So this better be good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, so let's taste out my fish nachos, my red Tex-Mex fish nachos. Never had fish nachos before. This is worth it. <laughs> 